Uh, well, I'm very, very excited for the uh, next talk here. So I've, I've known Juanis almost since the very beginning of the community. He's been putting out great content around Data Mesh since even into 2020. There's, I think your uh, first uh, kind of content on that was like the 10th or eight, ninth piece of content around Data Mesh ever. So, um, and uh, so Juanis was leading the implementation at DPG Media, so he's got kind of the multiple perspectives on this this topic as well. So um, I'm very excited to hear about how, what you need to be doing around security when it comes to Data Mesh. Oh, I keep forgetting to say, I'm Scott Herleman, I host Data Mesh Radio. We've got a meetup later today in this theater. People are interested around Data Mesh, but um, I, I, I really uh, trust Juanis to take us through some uh, really important topics because this is something that a lot of people just kind of keep skimming over when it comes to data mesh is security and this is the thing that's uh, that can really, really bite you in the end. So I, I think this is going to be uh, very valuable for a lot of folks out there. That one is, you want to take yeah, it? Yeah, thanks. Uh, Scott ruined my first two uh, slides. So the good thing is that I can take some time back to really state you should come to the meetup. Uh, it's, it's looking very promising. Um, today I'll of course be talking about data, how data mesh impacts data security, two of the topics in data I'm quite familiar with and quite enthusiastic about. And as Scott was saying, I was leading the data mesh implementation at DPG Media and as such written a lot of content, but also have been the second speaker of the, the global data mesh community. Remember, uh, it must have been 21st of May 2021. And I remember the date because that's the week my son was born. Still, I took the time to talk to Scott. Um, currently, I'm head of product at Rito. Rito is a tool that allows you to s easily manage access to your data. We have a boot next to it, uh, to the stand. So if later on you have some more questions, feel free to pass by as well. But today, how data mesh impacts data security. And let me first go back to where I encountered the pain that led me to data mesh. I was working at Ascend Belgium, uh, a small energy supplier in Belgium, being part of a large European group, at that time Energy. And we represented 0.5% of group revenue. Hence, the company said we need to be relevant on, on a different field. Let's be kind of a labo environment. And they decided to build their own new operational systems. New CRM system, new billing application, new payment application, all open source cloud-based led by business experts as product owners. And if you, of course, if you start changing your operational system, you also need to start changing your data environment, or at least where your data comes from and enters your data platform. Yet they took the opportunity to as well change the data platform to open source and cloud. That's where I've stepped in. I was leading the BI team and the data analytics team. Unfortunately, I told you, the, the team implementing the operational system was led by product owners being business experts without any proper IT knowledge. That caused kind of that every deployment of the operational system had a drastic change of the data model causing an outage on the, on the reporting environment and that's where people feel that something's going wrong. So every deployment of the operational system Suddenly, a bunch of people were standing at my desk and complaining, why does my report doesn't show any data? And that felt really unjust. We, we of course, had the responsibility to make sure that we can adapt quite easily and refill the reports with the new data, but the outage is not caused by us. The outage is caused by deployment of the operational system. And that, that's where I started thinking, if, if, if you can introduce certain concepts which later on seem to be the four data mesh pillars, then a part of this problem can be solved. Because if you can put the responsibility of offering a data product, this is a customer at the CRM team, and this is an invoice, or these are all our invoices at the billing team, and these are all our payments at the payments team, and really introduce this concept of domain ownership and people that then need to deliver a data product with that, it would have brought stability to our data pipeline, making sure that everything's backwards compat compatible, every deployment offering a data product as well, keeping backwards compatibility, would have not caused an audit on the data environment. 
yet of course if if you, if you want to reach this you need to have a self-serve data platform because those people are already building kind of an application the data is a byproduct and they need to offer it now as a data product to the environment you want to get their life as easy as possible so that's where the self-serve platform taps in and if you're doing this from a moment you reach a certain scale you also need a, a good governance around it a federated governance as people throughout the entire organization are, are taking on certain responsibilities and as Scott was saying probably I have, have been the tent or something or maybe earlier people writing about the same concept it was only later on that I, I was able to put the node this is data mesh pillars on top of it so this should also be the data mesh definition then well not really certain about that one um, going back it was early 2022 so last year I was talking at Strata O'Reilly no exact date in my mind because no kids were born that period um, but I was thinking if I want to present data mesh on such a huge conference I need to have a one slider or definition and put it on there this is what data mesh is and I think it's not fair to really refer to the four data mesh pillars that's more how are you going to implement it what do you need but if i wanted to create a definition this is data mesh i was i was not able to do so and i've reached out to the community and asking about a, a definition and no one could give a concise definition it's way easier to tell what it's not if a vendor out here is stating we are the data mesh solution we are the data mesh architecture then just go run away because it's not an architecture data mesh is more of an abstraction layer of moving you away from uh, from from architecture i always tell any kind of tools can allow you to build an architecture it's about how you use them and if others are telling me we offer the perfect data model uh, data mesh model again that's not entirely true that's that's not true at all even because every data product within your data mesh can have a different data model perfectly fit for the purpose of that data product sometimes that will be a star schema another time that will be a data vault just a data mart or whatever but the, the data model is depending on the purpose you have for that given data product so it's way more easy to tell you what it's not but if i try to define data mesh i think the most core component is I can tell you what I'm trying to solve it's this pain that I felt at Ascent where ownership resides at a wrong place where a central data team is responsible to manage all the data you have without the proper knowledge they don't know the business logic they don't know the source application they're not even responsible for every deployment so they cannot be granted responsibility for when something's going wrong and that's the issue you're trying to solve with data mesh and that's probably more core to the to the concept than the four pillars you need to then try to implement stuff and that means that the biggest component in here is a cultural change it's pushing the responsibilities left pushing certain responsibilities to those that own the data and last week or two weeks ago I was listening to a podcast and something ab about change in general and something struck me because they were stating if you want to apply change then change what needs to be changed not what is easy to change what is easy to change in, in data mesh is the data platform it's not easy it's a complex task but it's it's the given that we all know we can change the data platform we can introduce a new one what we're not certain about is how people are going to use it can we put the responsibilities upstream can i convince my crm team to offer a set of customers and to truly own it on every field and if i go back then to my dpg media story um, where i've been leading the data mesh transformation towards two years i'll state that's work in progress and when i came in first thing the most senior data engineer said was well Manas, i believe we have kind of have five data leaks there's one good thing we all started off from the same blueprint 
yet of course they all differ and the teams or the, the people working with data they reside throughout the entire organization but not domain driven organized it's mostly consumer oriented organized we have data people in marketing we have data people in sales but they're not the one responsible to offer the sales data they're mostly responsible to consume the sales data so again from a product point of view something was wrong and the approach we've taken and which i believe was not bad but after the facts and also thinking to the podcast last week was not perfect was to first try to bring everything central introduce a data platform and only later look to the cultural change so we've postponed the hard part um, because if you look to the two years I've, I've been there what we've did is we've changed the entire IT architecture or data architecture by introducing Snowflake by introducing well going back in time to Scoop as a data ingestion platform by limiting the, the amount of reporting tools so a bunch of things have happened whereas most code resided within a central environment where data could still be decentralized as in living in different AWS accounts but we've centralized a bunch of things and by doing so also centralized the data team and only at the end when I was there close to the end of two years we were federating them in the correct way putting responsibilities in the customer service team both to offer data as well to consume the data in one single domain but that's the hard part because uh, at the moment I, I left, that was the moment where we saw the challenges facing ahead of us. And it's a bunch of things related to data governance. Um, let's, for example, state data quality. We had multiple copies of the same data, all living in, in different data lakes. And suddenly you try to move to one data mesh containing one copy of every data owned by the correct domain but who's that correct domain? How do you do domain-driven design for data? We were quite lucky that the IT organization was properly well organized as domain-driven uh, design. So from a, from a source-oriented uh, point of view, it was quite easy. But then later on, for example, you have a customer 360 view. Where does that reside? It combines data from all your data sources and you try to use it for sales, marketing and advertising purposes. So it doesn't have a source oriented domain where it belongs. It doesn't have a consumer oriented domain where it belongs. It's somewhere in the middle. From the other point of view, purely quality, whose responsibility, how can you put this? But in, in, in general, the challenges we were facing was what are the responsibilities of the data owner? First of all, who is owning stuff? What are his responsibilities? That's the biggest challenge we were facing and we've postponed it too long. And now we're coming to, to more towards now. If I, if I would have stayed at DBG Media, I think the next thing we would have needed to do was going back in time. Going back in time to the first blog post written by Jamak about, uh, about database, how to move beyond the monolithical data lake. And I believe that the four pillars of data mesh are already in there, but there's one concept out here in the back that, that's in there as well that's not often referred to anymore. That's the DATSYS principles of a data product. And I believe that properly defines the responsibilities of an owner. Your data should be discoverable. And we all know there, there's a solution for that. We're building data catalogs. We're filling data catalogs. My data is available or is discoverable in a data catalog. Your data should be addressable. You have an owner pointed to it, li listed in the data catalog, and you can call him when something's going wrong. Data must be trustworthy, live up to a certain quality standard. And again, there's a bunch of frameworks popping up helping you to do so. Your data must be self-describing, having correct column names and stuff like that so that you know what's in the data product. Your data must be interoperable. And that's the, the first four elements I've, I've, I've been talking about. Those are things moving. And now we are talking about your data must be interoperable. That's coming up next. If you want to have great content, by the way, there's a, a recent episode of Scott interviewing Kinda Almari which is great about the interoperable point of view. 
But then the, the last S, that's the one often being neglected. Your data product must be secure. And I was having a short chat with Scott here on stage, and I was saying, Zemak has never written a lot about it because she took it for granted. Security should be for granted, yet if you look to current implementations, it's often being neglected. So, so how can you cope this around? But going back, what is security? What is data security? Well, data security, looking to the definition, is the process of safeguarding digital information to, throughout its entire life cycle to protect it from corruption, theft, or unauthorized access. Both from a physical point of view, making sure that no one can get to your uh, storage layer and, and steal data, physical point of view as well in cloud that no one can access buckets or, or databases where your data is being stored, but also from another point of view, from a more digital point of view, making sure that only authorized people can access the data so that you can protect it from corruption. So to make sure that you keep the qualitative metadata, if it's created by someone knowing the data, that it's not being altered afterwards, that you can make sure that it's uh, in it integrity is being protected prevent it from theft so that it's always available I know it's there I can find it when I need it so I don't need to store a copy um, because I know where it is and I can protect it from unauthorized access to make sure that I know it's already there and, and that's more towards confidentiality towards privacy and often people are intermingling the, the words data security and data privacy, but it's not entirely true. Privacy is only a subset of data security. And if you look to the definition of data privacy, certainly in a lawful setting or, or a GDPR setting, well then data privacy means empowering your users to make their own decisions about who can process their data and for which purposes. So privacy is only a subset of data security and it's more in general about the lawful po point of view and it's the part where you can be transparent about and by the way I believe that will be the next battlefield or or more or less the next competitive advantage customers do find data privacy more and more important and if you can be transparent on which data you have and what you're doing with it um, then probably the customer will trust you more and trust you to provide his own data. But it's also about data minimization. I only capture the data that I need or I only use the minimal set of data uh, for the purpose I currently have. So it includes also masking policies, for example, or, or only granting access to a subset of data. And about purpose limitation. And there, that means you should have a clear overview of all the purposes you have, uh, all the purposes you apply to your data. But what then about data governance? Because a bunch of things I told or in your data governance project, no, that's indeed true. The data governance project is often trying to apply certain things towards data security, towards data, uh, data privacy. And if you see, and coming back to the DATSYS principles of well, where does a data governance project start? Well, quite often, first the cataloging, making sure that it's discoverable, making sure that we have a list of all data that's there. Secondly, assigning owners, making sure that the data is addressable. Thirdly, quality, getting your data trustworthy. So there's a bunch of things in there. And then somewhere along the road, also, by the way, data lineage, which data depends on which, on what. And I said, currently, a lot of discussions about interoperability. How can I make sure that data can always be connected? And, and that's a hard problem. Coming back to my time at DPG Media, for example, we had newspaper subscriptions, which by default, you as a person buy a subscription and you read it. Next to that, we also had a video streaming service where um, your subscription is actually a household and, it's, and you have profiles underneath that are watching. So if you, if you want to combine from an interoperability point of view subscriptions, well, then you need 
to combine a household and a person. But if you want to do this, who watches what and who reads that, you need to be on a different granular level, having different data products, for example, as well. And again, what I believe will be next in, the, in those data governance projects is this data security. But if, if you want to do this and put all those responsibilities at the owner, you need to decide what's there. Because if you're making an owner responsible for metadata management, filling your catalog, thinking about interoperability, but also putting security in there, it's quite a lot of responsibilities. Yet are all these, and certainly security, is this all belonging to the data owner? Well, not entirely. Part of data security responsibilities reside at the data platform team. If you as a data platform enable people to easily create new buckets and store data there or write to your Snowflake or your BigQuery instance, it's you as a data platform team that needs to make sure that those buckets as a whole or your Snowflake account or your BigQuery account is safe and secure. That's the responsibility of your data platform. It's then managing the more fine-grained access. Who can access which data? What can he do with it? That's the data security uh, responsibility that resides at an owner level, at, a, at an individual level. But if you want to put this responsibility at a data owner, you also need to know who he is. And at TPG Media, we had a, a triangle of ownership. We had a technical owner. That's the one you call at night when your data pipeline is going broken. We had a business owner. That's the product owner of a data product, managing what gets in the data and stuff like that. But we also had a purpose owner. Higher up in the hierarchy, for example, uh, the marketing director, he's responsible for the marketing purpose. And if ever there's any conflicts, that's the one you can use. If I'm now talking about the data owner, it's this product owner of a data product that also gets the responsibility of managing who can access my data. And that's quite often a business expert in a business team. No proper IT knowledge, no proper data knowledge. If you want to give him a certain responsibility, you also need to give him the tools to do so. And there again, there's a bunch of things happening. We have the catalogs, Colibra, Lation, Atlan moving on to simplify things. For data quality, you have frameworks like Great Expectations or tools like Monte Carlo, Soda Data. Interoperability is more a cultural challenge, so I don't see quite a lot of tools popping up right there. Um, next to that, there's data contracts popping up, not entirely clearly defined what, what's in there. But if you want to put access management in the hands, of a, of a data owner, if you want to have the security in his hands, you again need to simplify his life. It doesn't start with tooling. It starts with an easy to maintain framework. So if, if you want to move this forward, then probably it's good to have a, an access control framework that is easy to understand and easy to maintain. Previously, people have quite often been introducing RBAC, role-based access control. One function in the company can access this, this, and this. Um, I always tell there are things not entirely easy with this. DPG Media figures, we had 33 data engineers in an IT environment of 600 people, having five to 7,000 employees reaching millions of people on a daily basis, active in video, a newspaper, marketing, advertising, sales, you cannot expect that a single data engineer understands every data domain and knows every employee. So he cannot make an informed decision whether you can grant certain access. There's also been attempts to attribute based access controls, ABEC, but there you need qualitative metadata. So I believe there's something in the middle that can, can help people. It's PBEC or purpose-based access controls because it's a natural separation of concern with regards to data security. You have the data product owner who knows his data, who's only responsible to make sure that he can uh, decide for which purposes are you allowed to use my data. And later on, you have either a purpose owner or even maybe a hierarchical manager who can decide 
this, uh, this person can access a certain person. So suddenly someone who knows the data manages one part and someone who knows the, the people manages a second one and that's an access control framework that's easy to manage. And if you have the framework, only then you can start thinking about tooling. Um, and for example, if you have a, a, a request framework and the responsibility resides at the owner, you cannot expect him to change Terraform scripts or not even update SQL statements. So you need to give him an easy to use interface where he can manage access towards his data. So what you see here, for example, is how you would have a request state, I want to have access to this data for this purpose and purpose-based access control. And if I approve, I automatically implement and everything gets updated. But if you simplify things, there's again a new risk. If you simplify giving access to people, then probably everyone can quite easily get access to everything. So you also need to monitor what's going on. Are people actually using the access they have? Am I adhering to least privileged principle, the data minimization, the purpose limitation? Am I adhering to those? And not only giving the insights upon that, but also the actionability. Um, one of the things, for example, you'll, you'll always notice in access management uh, with a high risk on data security is that data engineers have admin credentials to the entire production environment. And if they're getting breached, you kind of have a big problem. So what we could also do here, and, and allowing the data owners to do so, is introduce the concept of pre-approved access. Yes, dear data engineer, you can get access to everything, but only on the moment you need to. And if you need to, because something in production goes wrong, you request it, it's automatically approved. It has a time bound. It's only there for two hours, three hours. And if everything's fixed, then it gets revoked, making sure that you minimize the blast radius, making sure that you get an increased data security. So yes, there are people that need to have access at every given moment in time, but keep it as short as possible. Again, the purpose is to fix something when something's go wrong, so you only need that for a certain moment in time. Just to, to wrap up, so if you look to data security, there's data security with a subset of data privacy. It should move left just as a bunch of other responsibilities. Not everything. A part of the concept, a part of data security is the responsibility of your data platform. But managing it on a lower level, that's the responsibility of the owner, which is probably a lesser technical skilled person. So you need to equip him with the right tools so that he can perform his job and to equip him as well with the right insights so that he can really safeguard his data environment. I'm Wadas, I'd love to thank you for your attention as well. If there's any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Feel free to come visit the booth we have exactly next to this. And again, I'm looking forward to also meet you at the meetup tonight.